Have you ever heard the story of the British cricketer Ollie Robinson? Maybe not, but unfortunately for him, one day after his big debut on the English national cricket team, a series of eight-year-old tweets showed up showing some very sexist and very racist comments. He was immediately pulled from the rest of the test match and suspended from all international cricket. How did something like this happen? Digital footprints. Hello, and welcome to our series where we talk about digital citizenship. And today we're going to be talking about digital footprints. What are they and why you should be concerned? So what are digital footprints exactly? Well, just like when you walk in a muddy track or you walk on a, on a beach, you leave your footprints behind you. Did you ever read that crime novel where the jewel thief was found out because he left a muddy footprint next to the window? Well, likewise, your digital footprints are telling people where you have been and what you've been doing online. So the first thing you need to know about digital footprints is that there are two different types of digital footprints. One is called an active footprint. This is something that you purposefully do. You send an email, you post something, you fill up a form, you shop online. All of these are examples of active digital footprints. Now, the second kind of digital footprint is called a passive digital footprint. This is where you're leaving behind information that you didn't even know you were leaving behind. Things like your search history, the browser that you're using, your IP address, which can also be tied to your location, and several other data points that you are unwittingly leaving behind every time you go online. So now, why should you care about these? Well, for starters, every time you go online, the more information that you're sharing is more information that's out there in the world about you. Okay, so the first thing you need to be aware of is there's certain information that you probably wouldn't want to tell to a stranger. So maybe you shouldn't be posting it online. There are also things like Ollie Robinson had sexist or racist comments that probably didn't help him very much in the end. You want to avoid and you want to make sure your students avoid making comments like that. Now, what can people learn from these active digital footprints? Well, for starters, you're putting a lot of information out there, like maybe the school you went to or the workplace that you're at. Um, maybe you're putting information about your family and your family members. You're certainly putting your billing address or your credit card information, and you're posting a lot of photos in all likelihood. All of these are active digital footprints, and over time, they build a, an entire story. And people can use this story to say what it is about you, right? They'll probably figure out what you like, what you don't like, what your interests are. So think about this every time that you're putting more and more information about yourself out there, you're going beyond your circle of trust and you're telling people about your life. And the question is, should you be telling people so much information? And what if that information got into the wrong hands? Now, the next type is called a passive digital footprint. This is information you didn't probably even realize that you were sharing when you're going online. It's things like your IP address, which is also linked to your location, uh, information about the device you're using, information about the browser that you're using, information about your search history, how many times you visited a website, what are the things that you're looking up. All of these are passive digital footprints. You don't even realize that they're happening, but in the background, they are happening. And again, that can be combined with your active digital footprints to build a complete story about who you are. This gives criminals an opportunity to take that information and use it for the wrong purposes. Uh, here are just some examples of all the different kinds of digital footprints that you might be putting out there. So the question now is, what can you do about all of these digital footprints? Well, even if you don't have a social media account, as you can see, there's still a lot of information that you're in all likelihood sharing. So the most important thing that you can do is be aware of the digital footprints that you are leaving behind. Actively monitor your digital footprints. What can you do? Why don't you start by Googling yourself? Because did you know that almost 37% of employers say that they now Google their job applicants every time they go for an interview? 
So the first thing you want to find out is if I want to go get that great new job, what's the first thing that somebody will see about me? And if it's not a positive digital footprint or it's something that maybe you posted when you were younger or you posted it in a moment of, of anger, you probably don't want your future employer seeing that kind of information. What can you do? Well, the first thing you can do is you can go back and try to delete as many of those posts as possible. Now, once they're out in the online world, it's very hard to pull that stuff back, but it at least helps that future digital footprints aren't being created when people can uh, pull up a tweet that you sent five years ago and say, oh my gosh, is this the same person that we're thinking of interviewing for our next job? The other thing that you can do is think before you post. So the next time that you go to post something online, should you be sharing as much information as you are? Should you be telling people where you've been? Those are things that you can, should you be making bad comments? Those are the things that you can be thinking about every time you go and make a post online or on social media. Once you start thinking about your digital footprint, you can regularly monitor that footprint, right? Occasionally go back and re-Google yourself. Again, that prospective employer, what would they see this time when they Google you? Right now, these are all the kind of things that we can be teaching children because now that children are online from an earlier and earlier age, and maybe they aren't thinking about their future employment or even their future university. So what can you do? Well, as you know, we have our CBSC skills subject for grades six, seven, and eight that talk about digital footprints and many more subjects regarding digital citizenship. In grade six a curriculum, uh, you'll find lessons seven and eight, where we introduce the concept of digital footprints and we talk about how digital footprints are being used by marketers to send you advertisements. In grade seven, you can check out lessons number three and four, uh, where we talk about the longevity of digital footprints and your online persona, which is just as important. And then in grade eight, Please check out lesson two, where we talk about online friendships and how much information you should be sharing with others who maybe you do or maybe you don't know when you go online. Again, it's all about retaining your privacy, managing your information, and making sure that the people that you don't want to know about you don't know about you. I hope you feel much more equipped to teach this to your students because it's a really critical life skill that they all can know. In order to get your certificate for completing this module, please check out the quiz. It's in the link in the box below. There's a short five question, multiple choice quiz for you. We then ask you to go and check out those lessons that I just referenced. Please teach them to your students, at least 40 students. And then let, let us know on leadzworld.com uh, how you did and share with us your experiences of teaching digital footprints. Until next time, thanks and see you soon.